how are you all today? Very energetic because we are going to talk about solar energy, which is the energy which is very bright, very pure from the sun. Although now we do not have any Can solar you on the... this evening. Okay, so uh, before we start, uh, I would like to say thank you very much for your time uh, after a headache working day, and then you guys are marvelous. Uh, you are still willing to take your time out to participate in this event. So give you guys a round of applause. And then also wanted to thank uh, Gravy Factory for letting us to help this very event. And also thank you to the crew members, uh, Simpson, who is the CEO of Green Juice Column 4, and uh, Matthew, and also Jain. Where is Jain? Oh yeah, yeah, she's at the back there. Okay, so uh, my name is Jeffrey, and today I'm a three-in-one speaker, meaning I'm your MC today. I'm also a moderator, as well as uh, I'm also hosting this event. Okay, so um, without further ado, uh, just would like to know that who is very, very new to solar energy, meaning wanted to learn something new. Uh, can you raise up your hand? Who is like, very, very new to solar energy in this field? Okay, I see a number over there. And then, who actually have some knowledge but actually wanted to know more about solar energy? Okay, okay, that's nice, that's nice. And then who are the ones who are the professional, who are actually in the line of doing solar energy? Okay, so, so we are having a mixed group today, that's good. Okay, so let me start off with uh, talking about, is this familiar to you all? Yes. The 17 Sustainable Development Goals? Okay, because uh, this goal has been drafted since 2015 to tackle a lot of problems and solar energy actually falls under SDG number 7 which is affordable and clean energy. So there are two important keywords here. One is affordable and one is clean. Affordable meaning we have to make the energy as cheap as possible for everyone to use. Okay, and clean energy meaning the production of that energy does not emit high amount or better yet, best if zero CO2 emission. Okay, so these are the points. And before I go to the next slide, you know in Malaysia we have several renewable energy resources besides solar, for instance like biomass, biogas, geothermal, and also small hydro. Can, can you pause for one? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, may I know, can the people behind here uh, hear it? Yeah. Then? Alright. Sorry. No, I, I, I can hear it higher here. So the throw will be there. No, there's not enough throw on that. Hello. People in the back, can you hear me? Loud and clear, crystal clear? Okay, okay. Uh, oh yeah, so, so coming back to the question, in Malaysia we have several renewable resources and I just would like to ask some of you, which one actually is having the most installed capacity in Malaysia? Uh, can I ask you, for example? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's your uh, name? What's your name? Mersiana. Okay, Mersiana. So what do you think in Malaysia, which one, which of the RE is having the most installed capacity in Malaysia? Okay, uh, she's mentioning Solar and uh, Simpson. Sorry? I uh, uh, yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who says is biomass ha uh, is having the most installed capacity in Malaysia? Biomass, biomass meaning uh, is yes. the burning of, uh, let's say, agricultural waste municipal solid waste and then turning them into energy, electricity, selling back to TMB. Biomass, who say is biomass? Biogas? Small hydro? Or is it solar energy is having the most installed capacity in Malaysia? I'm waiting for the slides. <laughs> don't wait, don't wait. Yes, okay, okay. So the answer is solar energy because uh, solar energy is having 66.3% of the total re renewable energy in Malaysia at the present moment. 
it is more than half. Okay, yeah, so here finally is the chart. 63.33% for solar PV. Okay, it is having the most uh, renewable energy share in Malaysia. Okay, so um, many people say about um, solar energy does not emit carbon. Um, this is correct in the sense of during the, the operation. However, solar PV actually does emit certain amount of CO2. Uh, do you know why? Because uh, if you look at the entire life cycle of it, the production of the material, let's say the balance of systems, the roof mountain material or the ground mountain material, as well as the inverters, the electronic component, actually does contribute to the solar emission, uh, I mean the greenhouse gas emission of the solar energy. Okay, so why solar as a renewable energy? Why everyone is talking about this globally? As you can see, um, the global energy is keep on increasing, I mean the, con I mean the consumption of it. One of the factor is because uh, we are having population increase throughout the years and also throughout the decade. So this one we cannot stop it. And also the services per person that is needed. As developed countries are more developed, then people have higher income, therefore they have more purchasing power, therefore they can afford, let's say, for better television, bigger cars and so on. Therefore, uh, services will keep on increasing, especially aircon in Malaysia. And also energy per services which is needed. Therefore, we have to find a solution for really combating the CO2 output of the energy. Therefore, solar is one of them, one of the renewable resources, which has a really low CO2 output. And basically, there are two types of solar energy. One is we call active solar, another one is passive solar. Passive solar is, for instance, is like daylighting, you know, solar drying, solar heating. While active solar, you can see in this picture, is like solar photovoltaic system. This is a solar farm. This is a solar thermal. And this one is the CSP, it's the concentrated solar power plant. Before I go to the next slide, we have been using solar energy in a daily basis. Um, and I wanted to ask a question. Can anyone give me an, an example of how do we use the light from the sky in a day-to-day -day basis? Anyone can answer that on a daily basis? Okay, let me just give you a few examples. Now, we have been using solar to dry our clothes and also we have been using solar energy as a light for us to work in a day in the office and as well, we use solar energy for drying purposes let's say for drying of tea leaves, drying of herbs, drying of salted fish and so on and also, what about this? Sunbathing, relaxation day and you can see this guy is very happy you can guess why? Because he actually owns a solar, a portable solar water pump for his agriculture purposes. So this is one of the few uh, applications of solar energy. And also, within the very northern and the southern part of the earth, whereby the climate is not as warm as in Malaysia, they are dependent on the solar infrared to heat up the uh, horticulture, which is the greenhouse this is called a greenhouse to obtain a stable temperature for the fruits and vegetables to grow. So these are one of the applications. Uh, and also solar energy has been used for rural water and wastewater treatment. For instance, you can see the picture on the left. Um, they are using a very translucent plastic bottle for bacterial killing because they are using the UV light from the sun to kill harmful pathogens. And this one actually uses the solar photovoltaic system to produce energy for the for the reverse osmosis pumping to produce clean water in the rural areas. And also there are a lot of off-grid purposes of using solar energy. Uh, for instance, off-grid telecommunication towers, uh, this will need some battery storage. And also solar road signs you can see across Malaysia, 
the stop road sign and then also the bongo road sign and also a weather station as well and passive solar daylighting uh, who knows what building is this? yes this one is the headquarters of energy commission malaysia or the surahan jaya tenaga malaysia so they are building design actually save more than 50 percent of the uh, electricity from lighting because you can see in the top part here actually it's a translucent design but it allows daylighting to penetrate into almost all the offices inside so this is one of the application of solar energy this is passive solar lighting and also for cooking rural areas actually uses uh, mirrors to focus the heat of the sun to cook their chapati for, for, for example this one is the higher tech which uses lens technology to focus the sun ray and heat up the food which they are cooking here and also solar vehicles for instance like this bicycle wow it's so cool you see you can see the rim actually is made up of solar cells and this solar trishaw and also right now we have a lot of solar gadgets uh, who remember last time that when we are using calculators, we see something like a solar thin flame? Yeah, yeah. So this is one of the, the application of it, solar gadgets. And right now we have solar power banks on our phone because people love to travel, so on and so forth. And also other solar gadgets to charge your phone instantly under the sun. And also a solar backpack. See how interesting it is. And these are the applications of uh, space technology whereby until currently there is uh, the solar energy is the only source to power the international space station and also the robot on mars okay so that is uh, my part uh, before that i would like to introduce the speaker of the day we are so delicate to uh, able to invite mr ko from plus solar system uh, we met uh, during last year march uh, during the national solar conference at apu Asia Pacific University. So this is the first time that I met uh, Mr. Paul presenting about uh, solar energy as well. So give a round of applause for Mr. Paul. Hey, Mr. Paul, please. Alright, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks a lot for coming, um, and also thanks a lot uh, for the organizer for the invitations. So uh, our friends behind here, can you hear me clearly? Can right? Okay. So I think uh, while we are waiting for this uh, setup, well, probably I would like to just do some uh, self introductions. My name is Cole. I'm from Plus Solar. So I am the co-founder of Plus Solar System. Um, yeah, later on I will show you guys that what are we doing. And today, the purpose of having this session today is mainly we we'll let you let you guys know something more about the solar energy. Because what we all have already known is uh, what uh, our this uh, MCs and our uh, current speaker the maybe what he has been explaining about the solar system and also the solar heating, those are kind of knowledge that we really know. So today, for my sessions, I will go a bit more inside. The first thing I will share about the global solar energy business trend, all right? And then the second part, I will share about the solar business opportunity in Malaysia, from the past, present, and future. So this will be the main two portions that we are going to share about this. But before I uh, I proceed, I would like to just check. Any one of you install solar system at your home? No. How about the solar heater? All right, great. I think our friend here is able to uh, differentiate what is the solar PV and also the solar thermal. Okay? Solar thermal is mainly to use the heat to heat up the water. And we need pumper to fix it. Solar PV is what we are doing actually is using the light to generate electricity and then we are using the electricity to energize our all the loads and all the devices, the home appliance. So this is what Plus Solar is doing because up to last year I still have my friend call me and ask me to go to their home and help them to fix a solar heater. So this means our education we are still 
we, we are still we are still not uh, doing very well. But I, I think at least from here today, from a quick survey, I think pretty much the awareness is there. Alright, so so this is something that I'm going to share about, about the business plan. But at first I would like to introduce about Class Solar. Okay. So Class Solar is uh, the leading solar energy company in the country. In the past few years, uh, since we started in 2012, we have already delivered more than 120 over megawatts across the whole Malaysia. In terms of rooftop, uh, we have more than 30 over percent of the market share that we have already uh, delivered uh, more than 60 over megawatts uh, solar system across the whole nation. So there are a couple of uh, the iconic buildings in the country. It's all designed and built by our team. Uh, one of it will be the IKEA shopping complex. Basically, we have done IKEA Chiras and we have done the IKEA uh, Joho, and we just recently completed IKEA in Penang. And IKEA Penang is going to have a great opening in next week. So, any anyone from Penang here? No, right? Okay. Yeah. So anyway, when you guys go back to your hometown, don't forget to experience about the, I mean, the solar town with the, uh, I mean. Uh, from IKEA shopping complex. So right now we actually we are working, helping uh, Eternal Joho to do solar system as well. Right. And more and more this solar system you will see from all these uh, IKEA shopping complex in the country. So besides IKEA, a lot of other companies we help to convert a portion of their building energy to solar power. Including, I mean our, our client list including like Secret Recipe, IOI, um, IJM, Sunway, uh, this uh, this uh, coming up will be like a squeezer and there's a lot of other industrial players which we never heard about their name before but they will if we convert everything it will be more than 100 over buildings that we will, uh, they will, we will convert a part of the energy to solar power so as you guys see what happened already in the country so besides the building solar right wait a moment All right, we are building solar power plant as well. So in the past, we built a solar farm in KLIA. If you go to KLIA 1, don't just turn right to the airport. If you turn left, you are able to see a long-term solar car park here. And this is the largest solar car park in Southeast Asia, which uh, obtained uh, probably about 60 over acres of land. And we built uh, some of the solar farm in the northern Malaysia, in Perlis. This will be one. This, this will be the first solar farm in Kedah, which we built in about four years back. And this one is uh, another project which we just completed um, last year in Perak, which is about 250 over acres solar power plants, which is about 50 megawatts. It's, it's kind of a huge solar power plant, all right? Wait a moment, I think they are, yeah. All right, so this is our company. Uh, up to right now, we have close to about 100 people in the company, and we are kind of a value and also purpose-driven company. And most of our people in the company are quite young and energetic. And today, some of, here, some of them, they are here, like this lady, Armasiana, and that gentleman's uh, Wukan, and the other ladies behind Bunsi. So you guys, if you have any questions about the solar system, yeah, beside me, you guys can just con consult with all of these three um, young uh, gentlemen and also, and also the ladies. Alright, so right now, before I start the rest of the slide, I would like to let you guys know about the solar business. How the solar business looks like. There are a few things that we have to know when we want to venture about the solar business. The first thing is, it's always back to economy of skill. Alright? When there's demand, the price will drop. When there's no demand, the price will be quite expensive. And the second one is, this is a solar energy costing roadmap. Because what solar system is having in the past is always that electricity cost is pretty high. That's why we can't really use the solar energy for our home and also for our daily uh, dose usage. And then the reason is because the commercial energy is pretty cheap. But right now, the energy cost from solar is getting cheaper and the traditional energy cost is getting more expensive. So in solar energy industry, we always have a term which is named grid parity. 
which is the price of the solar energy, the same as the traditional energy. So this is the second, uh, the, those principles that we're going to know. Okay, I think, the, yeah, I think it's up, it seems like about three times, so next time it's true for three times at least. So, in order to run a solar business, I would say in the past, uh, when we run it, um, it's the kind of business and also the industry which highly depends on the market demand because we, we are driving a new technology. And at the same time, because we are in the energy industry. So for whatever business in energy industry, it also highly depends on the policy. So this business model and also the business environment, I would say, is a little bit dif different if compared with other business in other industries. If compared like f and or the rest of other business, it's a little bit complicated. So I want to explain the relationship between all these things. Uh, first of all, usually we will mention, because so energy work in the past, they are not really popular, but today is really popular. One of the key things is because that's a policy. I would say policy is just like a highway. All right? So we know the destination is we, are, we would like to use solar energy to replace uh, or let's say to subsidize as an alternative energy for a portion of our traditional energy. So that's the destination. Then the right policy it will lead us to the right destination. There's a lot of policy, right? It doesn't really fix the right problem, doesn't solve the right issue. That's why all those policy end up have no one would like to buy it and it will spend and waste a lot of government resources and money. So first of all, policy is something very important as a highway. Secondly is the technology, all right? It's like a vehicle. Technology can determine the speed and so on. And the driver and also the passenger will be the solution provider and also the clients who are enjoying this new technology. So from these three dark triangles, uh, the relationship, uh, later on you guys will like, you guys can try to match with the business trend that I will share with you. All right, so. Okay, so let's straight go to the solar business revolution 1.0. It's a global trend, all right? So at first, this is how the solar energy get invented in quite a long time ago. Which is 1883. And that first solar system is just 1% for the efficiency for the conventional grid. And today, we are close to about 20%. And what does it mean is, Today probably we just need to use a smaller size of solar panel, we can generate the same power, but last time probably we need to use a bigger size of solar panel to generate the same power. And this is what happened in the past. So which means solar energy actually has more than a few hundred years. It's a kind of a long journey of the technology revolution in the past. And that time, okay great, I think this should be better. So this is what happened. I mean, it come to uh, 1980 something and 1990 something. Because of solar energy, uh, the efficiency is already become better. So this is what happened, which appear in our daily life when we are still kids, or when we are still still teenage, or maybe some of you guys are still haven't delivered yet during these periods. And that time, we will see a lot of solar panels on all these kind of different appliances. At that time, the cost of solar energy is pretty expensive and the technology is pretty, uh, I would say, it's not that advanced yet. That's why you can see a kind of huge gap over there. And this is for the solar business 1.0. We only can use the solar panels for those home appliances and also some of those remote kind of appliances to use due to the gap. So here's solar uh, business revolution 2.0. So, when time passed by, the energy cost has become cheaper and cheaper because more and more people use energy. And also the cost has become lower due to the mass production. And the traditional energy, the cost has become more and more expensive. So during this period, there's still a gap here, right? 
So which means the traditional energy cost is still much cheaper if compared with solar energy. So in year 2000, in Germany, what they, what they did is they introduced a policy called fade tariff. And the purpose of fade tariff is to close out the gap between the solar energy cost and also the traditional energy cost. And this fade tariff policy is pretty success. And there's a lot of business, the houses, or the solar power plants has already um, developed in European country. And this is what happened during the time. You can see a lot of people on the roof, they put solar system. As long as they have farm, a lot of farmers, they, are, they don't want to become a farmer anymore, they want to become a solar farm owner. So they change the traditional uh, this, uh, agricultural business into solar business. And when the time is passed by, which is the solar business 3.0, Alright, that period, someone up here. Okay, that period, one of the key thing is the solar energy cost is almost very similar to the traditional energy cost. In Elon Musk found a company called Solar City with this cousin. And then what they did is, because that time the solar energy cost is still quite expensive, a lot of people they still can't enjoy the, uh, the cheaper solar system or they don't really have a good finance system for them to own the solar system. So they come up with a model called leasing business model. Alright? So what I did is, as long as you are the roof owner, you would like to enjoy and own the solar system, what they will do is, they will find someone to install and then they will invest on that. So which means you are able to have a solar energy cost in a cheaper price. And it will help you to reduce a little bit of your electricity tariff rate. And this is what happened in year 2000 to 2010, in early of 2010. But recently there are some issues that is because the solar energy price has become much and much cheaper. So instead of leasing, more and more people they like to own it. That's why you see uh, this acquisition happened between Solar City and also Tesla. Because they started to have some challenge in the business model, and then the Tesla has already acquired Solar City. And right now in US, which I just went in two years back, more, more, more and more people they like to own a solar system instead of they want to lease the solar system. Just like more and more people here, you like to own a car. When you're able to own a car with car loan, right? And this is what happened because of all, all these paid tariff, all these uh, leasing model. That's why there's a lot of houses already started with solar, especially in Japan and also in Western country. And the same things go to solar power plants, all right? And this solar, uh, Sun Edison, it used to be the world largest solar company, and they built and own a lot of solar power plants. So, what they did is, the business model that they did differently from others is they combine the whole value chain from upstream to downstream in order to make the solar energy cost more affordable. So the issue is about the solar industry is from upstream to downstream. And what they did is they are the investor, they invest in solar system, and then they are the EPC contractor, they do operation maintenance and they do their solar panel as well. They, they are manufacturer as well. And then they have a way to source a lot of this raw material. So basically they are the one who control the whole supply chain. But too bad today this company is no longer there. It's because of some of financial issue and also some of the wrong investment decision happened. So this model used to be very well, but they are no longer there, but there's still, still a lot of other companies uh, running the solar business in a very similar model. So from here, I would like to say in solar energy industry is kind of a very dynamic industry. You have one model, one business model you can apply, but that doesn't mean you will sustain for long. But it's also something quite exciting because you can see the demand is increasing and also get, everything is getting higher and higher. This is what happened in the past. For the solar energy price pretty expensive, when it's very cheap, it's even lower than this number. And then you can see the demand is super high. They they grow uh, quite uh, in a quite a drastic way in the past few years. Alright. So right now, as what I mentioned, all the things which I mentioned is already in the zone of green parity. And this is what happened globally. And in 60 old country, right, solar energy cost is the cheapest energy in that 60 old country. 
but not in Malaysia yet. Because to be frank, we are enjoying quite a cheap uh, energy from Kenaga. Because Malaysia, if you look at the tariff rate, we are one of the lowest tariff rate in Southeast Asia, we compare with our uh, the neighbor country. But it's still something still quite doable, which I will explain to you what happened in Malaysia later on. Alright, so that's the first part about the solar energy, the global trend. Anyone have any questions? If no, then I will proceed to the next one, which is the solar business revolution in Malaysia. Since most of you guys haven't invest or installed solar, or any one of you, your company did invest in solar system before? Starting. Alright, so right now you guys are venturing and would like to know what this is about. Great. We come to the right talk. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of history, just to let you guys know about how the government they push this energy revolution in the country, and this is what happened in the past. There's a solar one thousand starts from two thousand five and also two thousand ten, and then after that they replaced by two uh, feet tariff in two thousand eleven until two thousand seventeen. So I would like to tell you in story based, and this is what happened in Malaysia. That time, um, solar energy is pretty expensive, and most of the people who like to invest in solar really is those are European uh, uh, people who Malaysian government they like to push for more and more people to go for solar. So, the, so they come up with a program called Solar One Thousand, which means they want to convert thousand roof in the country to solar power. And you can see a lot of residential houses come with solar panel at the time in this way. And how this policy help is first of all, it's a kind of subsidies program. So, for example, my house and your house, we would like to go for solar. So, I will go to this solar one thousand to subsidize and to be. So, for example, I would like to solar one thousand to uh, subsidize forty percent of my investment. Probably my neighborhood they will bid for thirty five cent, uh, thirty five percent, which bid a little bit lower, which they have more capital. So the one who go for the lower bid, they are able to get the subsidies from the government. And they are going to enjoy the solar system with a cheaper rate. Because the rest of the rate, they will subsidize by the government. And this is how the system runs at time. The source of funds is from the government. Alright? And at the time, the system size is pretty small. It's just about 30 kilowatts. And this is what happened in a long time ago. Oh yeah, another way is a kind of one-to-one -one offset for the Monday electricity bill. So which means, whenever you have excess solar energy, you pump it to TMB, when you're going to use it back, you're able to offset with with one-to-one -one model, which is when your electricity bill is 40 cents, when you're going to offset, you are able to offset in 40 cents as well. All right? So this is in the solar 1.0 era. And in 2012, there's a, there's a government uh, body called uh, SEDA, Sustainable Energy Development Authority, they launched a new policy called Fade Tariff. And this Fade Tariff is a policy which run in Germany as well, which I show you. They are the first country to roll to test this policy in in, in, in year 2000, in quite quite early days. So this policy is able to turn and switch green energy into a profitable investment. So this policy is able to capture a lot of people's interest and also the ice ball because who don't want to have a passive income and the energy from the sun, right? And the investment, everything very looks very, is very attractive. And so this is what happened during the time. is It's a kind of investment program, which is we are able to sell the solar energy back to the TMP grid in a higher rate. For example, like your house, we have to we have to pay for TMP for 40 cents per kilowatt hour per unit. But when we are selling solar energy back to the grid, we are able to sell for 1.4 ringgit at time. It's pretty high. Who want to sell energy in a much higher rate? So the other one is, then the question will come, who will pay the additional 1 ringgit? TMB, they will definitely not going to pay you for this additional 1 ringgit. And that's why all, this, all of this 1 ringgit, I mean the additional fund, is all come from the renewable energy fund. And this renewable energy fund, if you look at your bill, every month we are we need to pay 1.6 percent of whatever we need to pay to TMB to renewable energy fund. And this fund they are collecting for 60 over million every year. And this 60 over million they are going to distribute to all the solar investors who invest in solar system 
for 21 years. Alright, so this is how the mechanism works. And this is something quite sustainable because this is not the fun part of development. That's why no matter you have change of government, or not change of government, the financing, the any have any crisis or not, who are the new financing minister, it won't affect this investment. It's something quite sustainable. And that time the capacity is up to one megawatt. And free tariffs also depends on the yeah, they have the different kind of bonus and the sizes. If you install on the roof, you can get some bonus. If you use solar panel as a this a solar couple system, you are able to get more bonus. Right? So that's also in the past. So what's now? So right now the solar system price has really come down. And it's quite close to the traditional energy price, which is in our country will be TMB tariff rate, the price. It's pretty close, very close. So right now under the new government, the yeah, idea first of all is something that we need to know about the future goal. Under the new government, they would like to set to grow the mixed re renewable energy in the country from 2% to 20% by year 2025. So that's another six years ago. It's kind of such a huge jump. From 2% to 20% is almost like 10x. Alright? So it's something which makes a lot of people quite excited. Okay, so which means this will have a lot of opportunity. The business opportunity, the job opportunity, and a lot of other opportunity will happen because of all this, uh, this uh, ambitious goal. So, when they have this goal, they also have changed something for the net energy metric, which I will share with you guys later. Because, as we know, for free tariff, the government is going to collect 1.6%. So, which means the fund it will be always fixed at the same amount. When this amount is the same, which means that only a limited people can enjoy from this fund. So this is something which only able to beneficial for small group of people. But the business you can't scale, you can't grow, because that's a quota. And so right now what is hap what's happening is that no local subsidies from the government. Which means you're not able to sell the energy price to TMB in a kind of higher rate. So what is going on is they are changing the model from solar energy into the energy saving model. So actually our customer group also has really changed. In the past we have a lot of clients that are investors. They have a lot of fund, a lot of capital, they are looking for 50% of IRR, 20% of IRR. But right now most of them they are gone. They look into the different markets and Malaysia what's happening right now is most of the people who look for us is a manufacturing plant owner or the building plant owner because they need to save that electricity cost. So solar system is a very reliable technology for them to save the electricity cost. And this is what happened right now, which is green energy, the value is energy saving. It's pretty straightforward. So this is how the mechanism works, right? Other than that energy metering. So these solar panels, and when you have electricity, you go through the inverters, then you will use it for your uh, those uh, factory devices or for your home appliance. So when you have excess power in the morning, then you're able to sell the energy, not selling, sorry. You're able to pump the energy back to the grid. And during the night time when you need energy, you're going to use the energy from the grid again. So we are treating this TMB as a huge power bank. So in the morning, uh, there's an excess power, we just sell to TMB. Sorry, we just pump to TMB side. And then we use it during the night time. And whatever we use, right, is all back to one-to-one -one basis. That's what I mentioned just now. If let's say you're 40 cents, you're able to uh, this offset for 40 cents. So this model is really good because to be frank, right now, battery solution is still quite expensive if apply in Malaysia country because our current rate is pretty cheap. But for solar energy, uh, using the net energy metering is something which is still quite feasible. All right? So, most of you here, you have your own house. So probably you guys will have a question. If I have already passed the FID period, which I no longer able to enjoy to invest solar system on my house roof, to sell the energy back to the grid, which I can like the mini YTL power, I'm the mini power plant owner. But right now, what would be my chances? So for the residential houses, I would say right now, based on this investment, um, 
is applicable, just your payment period it will be much longer. It's because the solar energy price and also the TMB price, they have some, still have some gap. So right now for this investment, right, I would say it's about um, close to 10 years for your payback period. But the solar panel, the life cycle is 25 years. So which means after 10 years, you're able to enjoy the solar energy uh, the energy for another 15 years with zero cost. And that will be your additional bonus. All right, so I just give you guys a picture again. During FIT period, the life cycle is 21 years because you are signing contract with KB for 21 years. Payback period is about seven to eight years. All right? So this is what happened in the past. And last time you are able to see the money come to your account. Right now you're not able to see money, but you're able to see the saving from the electricity bill. And then your period will be 25 years because solar panels actually is the life cycle. The guarantee, uh, the performance guarantee is 25 years. And then probably about 10 years will be your payback period. So these are the current situation. So which means when the solar energy price goes further, and also the TMB price is going to increase higher, you will see the payment period is getting shorter and shorter. However, however, for the business owner, there's some good news for the business owner here. If let's say you guys are business owner or you guys own a factory, all right, because for residential. Uh, owner, probably you guys can know this will be the payback periods and also the whole investment outlook. Um, before I go to the business owner, I would like to explain a little bit of this. So this will be the solar energy in the day, and then this is your energy consumption. Okay, it could be this patent or it could be this patent. Okay. So this is what going to happen is this is your building energy load, this is your energy load, and when you have additional energy, you are going to pump back to the grid, and then you are going to offset during the night time. So this is how you are going to save your energy in the daytime and also you are going to save a portion of energy in the night time. Alright. And the fact is we all know for all of these TMB tariff rate entries keep increasing from time to time. But right now they increase in a different way for business owner because they are increasing on the ICPT surcharge, not really on the tariff rate. But all the business owner actually they are facing the operation cost is getting higher and higher. And the electricity price is something out of our control because we only have one party who are selling us the energy. And we are out of control to control on our manufacturing cost, on our business operation cost. So, any business owner here who own those uh, manufacturing plants? You are, uh, all right. So for the rest, uh, probably you guys can go back and share with your team or they, probably you guys are the management team here, you guys can consider about this opportunity. So this is what is going to happen here is, a lot of people right now, they want to go for solar, especially those uh, company. It's mainly because solar energy is going to reduce their electricity bill. From reduce the electricity bill, they are able to reduce their operation cost. Because from a lot of our clients, they have three major costs in their OPEX. First is manpower. Second is their raw materials because they are all the manufacturer. And the third one is what? It's electricity cost. So they're able to see a significant energy reduction from their money bill, and also they will have more cash flow because of solar investment. And the best part is, they are able, if let's say the solar energy like what we do for IKEA, they're able to save for about 10 or percent of the energy uh, it's, uh, it's, all, uh, it's all generated by solar. So which means this 10% of solar energy, they're able to fix this energy price for 25 years. So when the rest of 90% of the electricity cost is going to increase, it will not affect this 10% of the solar energy electricity. If this is some factory they can have 50% from solar, then it will be much better. So which means they're able to control the energy price, the energy cost, for this 50% for 25 years. All right, so this is the concept. And something more uh, exciting is about the MIDA right now, they have some incentive, what they call capital allowance and also for the reinvestment tax allowance. So, if, in a simple way, I put it this way, is if you invest one million for the solar system and your company is making profit 
for 500,000, which is a tax that you need to pay to the government, you're able to offset. You're able to offset for your investment for 48%. So which means this reinvestment tax allowance and capital allowance, the double tax deduction is able to help you to get about 48% of discount from the solar capital that you invested. So you're able to save your company tax, at the same time you're able to save for whatever you have invested in green technology. So because of this reason, we are able to reduce the solar payback periods from 10 years to 4 years plus for most of the building and factory owners. Sound exciting, right? 4 years plus. Some places in northern Malaysia which the sunlight is even stronger, they are able to enjoy for about 3 years plus for the payback periods. So which means your investment for your investment uh, for your this uh, IRR uh, internal rate of return it could be more than 50% or 20%. It's something very very exciting and very very interesting. Alright. So um, yeah you can ignore the numbers but this is just some of concept as in when you invest in solar then you can see the energy is there. Usually the solar energy will drop from time to time and then we need to have a this a maintenance, alright? So these are the savings. We were able to have this saving, we, we did that our operation uh, and also the maintenance cost, this, so this will be our cash flow. So from here, these are the key. Probably about 4 years plus, you are able to break even after 25 years. And the rest of 20 old years, it will be so-called the free energy for you. So that's about the rooftop solar for the residential and also for the commercial and also for the industrial buildings. And the next will be the power plant. Alright, we call this LSS, large scale solar. In the past, uh, there's an LSS 1 and LSS 2 under the previous government. And the country has built for about 1 gigawatt, which is 500 megawatt plus 500 megawatt in the past. So 1 gigawatt almost is about uh, it's about it's about okay, it's about one one thousand megawatts. It's kind of kind of a huge uh, power capacity, and this is also one of the reasons why solar right now is what is the largest renewable energy source in the country. So the ministry they just announced this, and for your information, in the past LSS one, the solar energy price lowers, which the people bid for the tariff rate is forty one cents. It's almost the same as our residential electricity tariff rate. In LSS2, the lowest tariff rate had dropped to 34 cents, which is lower than our residential energy tariff rate. It's something more and more complicated. And for LSS3 right now, the government they are expecting the price to go to 32 cents, which is very aggressive. And let's see what's, what we go, I mean what's going on after that. And but something no doubt that we will see a lot, a lot of this solar system and also a power plant in the country. All right. So before I end my presentations, um, that's a view for some of the solar system that we are deploying in the country. This is uh, all the projects that we deployed. Just now you can see uh, there's an IKEA shopping complex, and this is a nice lot factory. If this customer is a kind of a solar king in these places, they uh, they deploy for a few a uh, uh, few times, and there are a couple of those listed company also go for solar. Some of them they are doing plastic, they are doing rubber, they are doing wood, steel, and so on. And the beauty of this solar system is it's something pretty flexible. You can install any place anywhere, as long as there's a space. So you can go for a rooftop or you can go for a ground. And the, yeah, this is a solar car park at KIA. So those are those buildings that we have a component portion of the energy to solar power 
in the past few years. And I would say right now, more and more people, they are more keen to look for solar. Especially some of them, they think this is something quite cool. Just for example, one of our clients, they are doing safety helpers. So they want to, they are the local industrial leaders. What they want to do is they want to tell all of their client that about 20% of the energy, I mean, to, um, this helmet that you wear, 20% is produced by the solar energy, which is consists about 20% of our coal energy uh, 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 the consumption. So at least they feel proud because uh, a lot of their clients use the product is a kind of a green product because they are reducing the CO2 emissions, right? So there's some of our video with some of the project that we've done in the past. And this is Plus Solar from Facebook. Yeah, you guys can just uh, search and just click Plus Solar and you can like it because from time to time we are going to share with a lot of our uh, this, uh, uh, Facebook uh, fans a lot of different uh, market update and also the information about the clean energy. Alright? So this is my contact. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys can email to me, WhatsApp me. Uh, there are this my Facebook. I just open. If you, if you guys would like to add it as a friend, that we can communicate after that. Yeah, let's just do that. So that's all. So that's so that's all about my presentations. And then the Q and A. I will. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Koshanjil from Plus Solar System. Okay, um, before that, uh, have I mentioned my name? I think I've forgotten. <laughs> okay, so my real name is Yong Sijun, but you can call me Jeffrey anyway, or Jeff. And I forgot to introduce uh, two of our uh, two of our strong members who is sitting at the back, uh, who always support us, you know, behind the scene, uh, always support us to carry out this uh, Green Drinks event, no matter what is happening. So uh, please welcome Bernard and Shimei. Thank you very much. They have been supporting us a lot, really a lot. Thank you very much. Okay, so right now we will be having a short Q and A question. But before that, I uh, wanted to ask Mr. Ko, um, why do you choose solar energy, particularly solar energy, as your entrepreneurship in regards like there are other types of renewable energy? Yeah. Okay. Um, probably a little bit story to share with everyone. I am a graduate engineering student, but I don't like engineering, to be very frank. I studied engineering is because during my age, I grew in mathematics and science. At that time, the whole world only had four jobs. Accountant, lawyer, what else, doctor, and engineer. So it seems like I should go to engineering. So that's why I'm not a good engineer until I met my life partner with solar technology in my final year. Because uh, during the time in my final project, I come across a final project which is doing the solar panels uh, of health research and study. And I found out this technology is something which I really able to master it, which I really know how to work with it, and I really like it. So from there, actually, I went to Taiwan for internship. And in Taiwan, actually, I further study about the solar energy. At that time, I found the global trend, especially of technology, is really moving from traditional energy to solar power. And then, including the investment, because that's the day I went to 7-Eleven, and I come, and I take out an investment uh, a book, which introduced the green investment. And in this green investment book, right, they just highlight to us, like, there's a lot of global bank that switch their investment from traditional energy into solar power, or into LED, into other energy. So I noticed a trend, and because I know about solar energy, that's why in Malaysia actually it's really suitable for solar system. Hydro is something which is uh, able to uh, debate because someone said it's not so environmental friendly. It could damage the ecosystem when you're going to build the host hydro power plants. Wind is not really in Malaysia and solar is something which is very flexible and very uh, easy to apply. So that's the reason why I choose solar energy. And before I started my business, I spent about four years to learn from uh, Germany and also Japanese company. Yeah. So, because today it's not talking about entrepreneurship, so I didn't really show some of the picture then how we start the business. But anyway, these are some of the story, then how we started the business and why I choose solar energy. Okay. Wow, so you see, this is for example. So maybe uh, one of you guys can 
start up with your own company in the future? Oh yeah, so the second question is uh, right now, everyone is talking about information technology like the Alibaba cloud, you know, uh, all this virtual reality, uh, AI, artificial intelligence. So, um, how does, uh, I mean, how do you see uh, the solar industry or particularly your company actually can adapt into this kind of uh, uh, technological advancement because we are moving towards IR 4.0 and uh, I'm aware that your company actually does have a dedicated department that is developing uh, software to optimize the uh, solar energy yeah yeah that's a very good question because um, because due to technology a lot of different industry has a lot of different revolutions um, plus solar mission right actually we don't limit ourselves just to solar energy solar energy is just where we start from our mission is reshaping the way of energy is generated and used one community at a time. So we want to reshape the way of how people use energy from energy generation, from energy yeah, uh, yeah, conservation, yeah. then we want to reshape yeah. it. And solar power is just one of it. That's why as uh, what he mentioned is um, in our company, what we have already seen the trend is in the past, we are experiencing the infrastructure transformations in energy industry. And this is what happened right now. And so you can see a lot of traditional power plants is not really building that. A lot of people, they switch the infrastructure into solar power. All right. So this is what happened right now. But after the infrastructure has really matured, actually the second wave will come is about the solar, it's about the energy digitalization. And energy digitalization is going to happen, uh, I would say, uh, probably quite soon in the near future but the digital the digitalization already happened in a lot of our daily life in the payment in probably the shopping and a lot of other places but not yet in energy so because of this trend that we found uh, from overseas and also from a lot of uh, this possibility because of AI and IoT technology uh, plus solar uh, we are also venturing into this that we are also doing some of the research uh, about the energy, the technology stuff, on the software part, because hardware, it will be something very important, and especially for energy, because energy right now, all the infrastructure that we're using, we need to change to a cleaner infrastructure. But a lot of infrastructure that we're using here, right, is a very traditional energy, it's a very traditional technology, which already having this during Thomas Edison time, which is few hundred years ago, when Thomas Edison with Tesla, they are fighting with uh, AC or DC kind of things, right? It's already happened. The transmission line, the grid, all these things is the same. We are still using, I would say, not so smart grid or you can say a dumb grid today. They say solar energy or renewable energy in the country, they can't go in a very high percentage. It's because the grid capability is not there yet to support for all these kind of alternative energy. So. The next thing it could happen is uh, the smart grid. It was something you will definitely it will start to implement. And in Germany, they already started to change on all these infrastructures with those uh, uh, IoT and AI technology on the grid side. So I will see this will definitely happen in Malaysia as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kaur. Give another round of applause. So now, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. okay, so now uh, here is the Q&A session from the floor, so uh, we can take any question. Anyone want to ask uh, questions or any discussion that we can bring? Oh, yeah. uh, maybe the gentleman at the back, maybe you can come forward so that we can hear your voice. So now it's uh, every household that actually installed the solar for own consumption for energy saving. 
uh, first question is that how to make the solar panel require for a normal household, okay, and in order to cover the saving. If what happened that if the saving uh, exceed, just now you say under NEM we no longer just sell back to the other, uh, uh, just to offset the, the yeah. electric usage. Yeah. Yeah, but how about we still generate more than enough for own use, okay? And uh, do they, the other will take how how they would pay us back the, the money? Okay. Alright, thanks a lot Mr. Tan. The I stand up so our friend behind you can you, you guys can see me. So the first question is about the size of solar panel, right? So uh, the solar panel right now what we are do what we are using is a kind of the solar panel with 72 cell and the dimension is one meter and two meters. So two meter is above my height, I'm not two meter yet, so it's probably about that size. And then the room I would say for most of the residential houses, uh, you can go for like 3 kilowatts, 4 kilowatts, this kind of capacity that you can fill out for your house roof. Or the, some of the houses you can go for like maybe 10 or 20 over kilowatts. So a lot of people they have a question, does it mean if I have bungalow, which means I can install more solar panels? Not really. It's because a lot of bungalow, the roof right, is pretty fancy. They have a lot of different angles, different triangles around. So the solar panel is pretty square and straightforward. So we prefer those kind of the flat and very big kind of the, this roof to install solar panels. So we call that as a friendly solar panel roof. So this is probably for you guys to visualize and able to understand about the solar uh, panel and how big you can install for your house. Usually um, it could be maybe about, uh, let's say 10 pieces to 20 pieces roughly that way. And then your second question is about the energy. If I say you have excess power, are you able to sell it to, I mean, are you able to pump it to TNB and how to offset it? So this all comes to engineering design. Um, because solar panel is not just about installing. The key is at the designing. And the designing is something that Class Solar, which is something quite uh, good at, is we need to study the home, how they consume the energy, day time and night time. Usually what we did is, we did for the factory and then we could do the energy loading. So from there we are able to know about the energy usage up and down. And then based on the actual energy demand, we will design for the supply. And this supply also will consider the roof size and then we will just design the right fit of the energy supply to fit their demand. And when they have uh, this, uh, this additional energy pump to KB, they are able to offset it. It's also something which is under within the control. So, yeah, I hope I'm able to answer your questions. Yes, come back to Tanaga. Okay, if you have excess power, that means you are able to, when you're using more energy from TNB, right, actually you are able to offset it. You are able to offset it. Oh, I mean, if you say you have a huge energy consumption but you are not using energy or no one is staying there, then we will advise that house owner don't install solar or we have to reduce it to the right fit. That's why this is all about the demand side and the supply side have control. Yeah, we have to understand the, uh, the, the, the user behavior, how they use the energy and then we have to, for the demand side, then we have to design for the supply side. Yeah, so it's always the demand and the supply kind of study. And at the same time, we need to understand how much we use the energy during the night time and how much we can offset. Do they have enough cap uh, this capacity to offset? And at the same time, this solar energy actually you can store at the TAB side, I think it's for 24 months, right? Yeah. So which means you have quota to park at the other side to use it for 24 months. So if let's say there are a couple of months, you guys uh, just go for holiday and just, you are generating a lot of free energy to TAB, don't worry, because when you come back, you just use whatever energy you want to use. But the eco-friendly lah. <laughs> then you're able to use, consume those energy that you that you have really pumped to TAB when you're not around. So this is the rough concept. So 24 months is something pretty good. Use inverters? Use inverters, yes. Yes, we need to use inverters because solar power is DC power. And whatever we are using today, there's a lot of AC power. So we need to use inverter as a converter to convert 
from BC into AC. We sell the access. Sell the access. Yes. Right now, no, we can't sell the access, but we just pump it back to TMB and then we off start. We do that. internally. Internally? Yes. What do you mean by internally? Before I sell to TMB. Before you sell to TMB? So I don't really get for any self consumption right now you are going for energy saving, right? Yeah, the solar system is going is always connect after the TMB meter. So if after the TMB meter we have to consume first, then if you want to sell to neighbor then you only instead of selling to TMB you can sell to neighbor, but you have to consume first. So this is the first thing is about the technical question. The second part will be very interesting, that's about the policy part. Because in some other country when you're not around, actually your solar energy, instead of your power back to TMB or their grid system, you can use it back when you're around. Actually, you're able to sell to your neighbors. But this is not happening in Malaysia yet. Not happening in Malaysia yet. And because of the new government, they say they are going to demolish all the monopolies, open up the whole energy market, which I wish is still there. Even though recently we know there's a lot of different news. But I think our minister are still pretty performing. But in order to fight with uh, this, uh, this traditional giant like TMB, it's not easy as well. Uh, how to uh, 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 liberate the whole market, it's not easy as well. But the agenda is really there. So like Singapore and also in Thailand, right, they are able to do such things, which is energy trading. And these are the next thing which we are quite exciting. But we have no idea when will this happen. So for example, in the future, if let's say you're staying in condominium, and let's uh, this uh, let's say the, let's say there's a, there's a, there's a factory, is installing probably a huge solar power on their roof, and you are those are environmentalists, you want to go green, you can choose yourself. I buy the energy from TMB, I can buy from them. So this is what happened, but not really in Malaysia yet. So let's stay tuned for that. Yes. That's a contract with our government for 20 odd years that our government has to be right? Okay. So I don't get it. Is there a contract between our government and TMB? Oh, any contract between our government and TMB? Uh, basically, <coughs> in the past 20, 60 over years, yeah. TMB used to be a part of the government. GNC? Buddy? It's a GNC, right? Yeah. Policy. Before they privatized. But right now they are really prioritized, but all the asset, hundred percent in the country for the infrastructures, for transmission and distribution, is all that. But on the generation side, not really. There's a lot of different power plant. Uh, this uh, this uh, this generator there, and for the distribution license, also have a lot of different people. Like for example, like in over here, actually in this uh, KL Central, the distribution license is not for DMB. Is from MRCB in North East Bacon. In KIA is under MHB, the Mid Valley is under Mid Valley. So in energy industry, you should have three different portions. So in, what happened in Singapore is their national government, they just own the transmission, those are distribution line. But for generation, they give others to work on that, and then for the this, this distribution license, they give other people, they, give, they open up for a different careers. So in their country, uh, they just manage for those infrastructure that's all. But in Malaysia, it's all under majority, it's all under one party. Yeah. So this already uh, happened in the past. Yeah. So right now, I think the new ministry they come up for My Power 2.0. So I think My Power 2.0 is going to open up the market. But uh, let's see. Oh, I mean, what will happen? Uh, I have a question. Is 20% uh, that target, is it possible? Is, that, is this 20% target possible? Yeah, very good questions. I wish it is something that we are able to achieve it. Uh, but look at the current situation. I think the awareness is not really there yet. And anyone from TMB here? <laughs> Anyone not from PMB here? <laughs> Anyone from PMB? <coughs> because the whole process, uh, there are some challenge that we face. 
I mean the government policy which they are pushing for this, but on the existing uh, this the business owners who, which own those asset, actually there are some challenge. Some of the some 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 of the like the, a lot of, a lot of this uh, criteria that we have to fulfill, a lot of this uh, safety requirement which is important. Uh, but sometimes on the commercial side, which some of us study the test and the price is super high because when you want to do so and so, you need to do some certain study, and they are charging a very expensive price. So I will say there are some of the people that probably will kill the people interest. I hope most of Malaysia, the fire it won't just come down because of all this challenge. This, this is the reason why I'm here, I would place here, that every year actually we do a lot of seminars. I mean since 2012. So in the past six or eight years actually we went to different places to do the similar seminars because we want to plant the seed to everyone here that we all understand we are moving towards the direction which we so call energy independence. And in this direction of energy independence, we have the right to choose the energy and enjoy the cheapest energy that we want. And we have the right to generate the energy that we want. I would say right now, TNB, they are also quite friendly in terms, in terms of opening this. That's why I am able to understand their situations. Because if compared with other countries, like in Indonesia, I would say they have no solar. They have no hope for solar energy at all because the local utility company is super powerful and they just ban anything about solar energy. You only can do solar off grid, which is not connected to the grid. Now that's what happened in oh sorry, that's what happened in Indonesia, not the big, it's Indonesia. That's what happened in Indonesia, which is very difficult. In the past few years they want to do FIT, but always there's a deal come out by end of the day, you can't do it. So I would say Malaysia TMB, they are pretty smart, which first of all they embrace the change. They embrace this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, revolutions, and actually right now they also be a part of players that invest in solar system as well. Yeah, so I would say in the end, right, it's not it, it won't be just about the fighting. It will be about how are we going to collaborate with each other, and we wish the policy it will be more fair to more people come to this uh, this uh, new new energy segment to have a lot of this uh, enjoyment of uh, for the different fruits that everyone can enjoy from there. So I will say in Malaysia, I will still focus on, I will still be quite positive because at least, uh, at least they, st they still have quite a lot of uh, collaboration there. We can't have 100% uh, perfections. This is the reality in our life, we have to face it. Yeah. And the rest I will say is all about the awareness for people. And there's another challenge is on the financing part. Yeah. Because in the past, solar system is something which is quite difficult to afford. So I would say from time to time, right? Yeah, a any bankers here? Thanks, you're the ex banker. Banker, you think that most of bankers they are aggressive for conservative? They are open. They are open. But, but yeah, I expect calculated but, risk. But calculated risk. <laughs> so this is, this is the reason why for yeah. most of the bank there's a risk comp there. And risk comp the past is always there to ensure their investment, the risk is all well mitigated. It's all well protected. That's why what happened is always solar investment financing for most of the bank is okay, I wait for them to do first, you see. No. But uh, there's this green technology financing. Yeah, I will explain about that. So in the past, right, in Malaysia during FIT period, it's very difficult to get financing. The first bank who do it for side part for the investment is HSBC. And then after that, I think go to the company like OCBC. Uh, stand chart, uh, after that they finance for the KRA solar project and also there's another Malaysia, I think most of Malaysia bank I would say yeah, yeah, M bank come in later on but M bank because under the M crop group they also invest in solar so the founder, the, I mean himself is some country is someone who are quite open now. Yeah, but they also come out, I mean they invest on their one but they come up this uh, later on but I would say in the very initial stage it's all the foreign bank so literally uh, recently I would say there's a lot of local banks who start to do that. Like Public Bank, is uh, this uh, this uh, is Public Bank, May Bank, uh, yeah, quite a lot of local banks. But they are not doing project financing yet. They are still mainly depends on the balance sheet financing. They still need the uh, business owner to have personal guarantor director uh, guarantee and to charge some of their asset. 
So at least they want to make sure everything is safe. But what happened in Thailand is they are able to finance you as a project financing or balance sheet financing based on the power purchase agreement. Yeah. But Malaysia, they still want to charge this and that. Okay, I think this is something quite normal, but it's already getting much better in compared with the past. So I think it's something that we need to acknowledge this improvement. So I think the next is how are we able to go to accelerate the whole transformation from a different angle in the country. And I see the current government, they are pretty aggressive. There's a lot of different obstacles as well, but they go into the policy side, they go into the, from the banker side or the technology side, try to speed up the whole transformation. So I, I, I'm still quite positive. Yeah, but I think someone said this 20% you could only achieve by 2030. 2030. Yeah. But I think, I believe our current minister will go all out to be. Yes, yeah, yeah we, really we, that, that's what we wish and that's this what we hope so as well. Yeah, we all need to support, lah, and create the balance. That's our part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the two savings. And reduce what zero emission. Emission. Zero emission. Zero emission, yes, yes. But still gets a little bit solar, right? Can, can you explain to us how this America, can you give us some idea if you, you know, like how America government uh, take this solar technology as their, their current practice? America, yeah. US, solar energy, who is the president now? <laughs> there's no hope. There's no mark. I mean, they, 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 they don't really have any policy there. Obama time is really supportive in solar energy. But what happened when Donald Trump became the president? The first thing is they quit from this uh, PICC. Right? Actually, right now in the US. Yeah, Tesla, I would say they are able to survive because that time they really get the support from Obama. And after that, from a Model S, they earn the money, and right now Model 3, they are really able to sell, and they are really able to self-sustain. So they are not really rely on the government. I think self-sustain is very important, because I would say a lot of business, right, it will not be sustainable if you need to rely on government policy or the government subsidies. It's not sustainable. That's why in the past when we are doing FIT project, we always make a joke. It's quite sarcastic that we are running a sustainable energy but not in a very sustainable way because it all depends on the government money. But right now it's getting better because you don't really need to have a lot of government subsidies. It all depends on your energy cost and your cost efficiency. Yeah. So right now in the US, actually, they have no much government policy. It's all about the different state. They have a different local utility policy. and. The energy cost is pretty competitive over there, yeah, so they are able to have a self-sustain kind of the business model, even though they don't really get a lot of huge support from the government. Uh, yeah, so any other questions at the back? Okay, the lady in the yellow dress, yeah, can you stand in front? Can you bring it closer? Uh, yeah. Uh, I have two questions. One is uh, uh, using renewable energy efficient solar. The objective is to reduce the carbon emissions from the usage of the fossil fuels uh, energy. However, when I look at the large scale solar, I see you like, in order, in order to have a uh, huge uh, energy output from the solar, you're cutting up a lot of green area trees. So we have a flat land for your solar panels. What is your thoughts about this part? I think a lot of environmentalists, this, uh, they always will critic about solar. It's not really bad green because of this uh, chopping of the forest, or the, yeah, to clear the land for the solar panels yeah, to install. So I'd like to know your thoughts. Uh, second uh, question is, uh, when you're talking about solar, that's how you're presenting about a lot of solar is uh, solar on the roof. That's kind of conventional solar. Um, 
I know now there's a trendy on the building installed integrated solar panel. And uh, in Denmark, there are some buildings that install the solar panel uh, at their windows. So the PPIB uh, in Denmark. And the other thing, uh, what is the energy efficiency compared from the conventional solar panel? This kind of uh, building integrated solar panel. What is the difference? Okay. Is the building in the greater solar panel and have a chance in Malaysia as well? Yeah, so uh, just let me repeat the question. Yeah, yeah. So the first question uh, is, just now Mr. Kong presented about the last few solar, the LSS1 and LSS2, and then we have seen in the pictures that uh, we have to clear vast virgin land in order to build those solar systems. So in terms of environmentalists, of course, uh, they will feel a little bit offense. Uh, and the second question is talking about the integrated solar system in the building. Uh, for instance, like in Denmark, which they replace windows with semi-translucent uh, solar panels to generate electricity. So I um, wanted to know what is the efficiency of this kind of new integrated solar PV system if compared to our conventional uh, solar rooftop system. Yeah, Mr. Kau, please. Thanks a lot for the questions. And yeah, basically we are almost having the same mission here in our career. This is going for the green buildings, all these things. Okay, the first question is all about the solar power plant and this is a question that uh, most of the time I will be questions my audience. Um, in Malaysia, actually the government, they are treating this quite straight because when you are going to build any solar power plants, right, there's one report that we have to get is from the, this, uh, this, uh, the, we, we need to do the EIA report, Environmental uh, Impact Assessment Report. So we need to pay for the consultant and they need to do the assessment about the area, about the slope, about the tree, about all these things which they are need to do all this assessment. So most of the solar systems which are able to build solar farm in the past is always the land without any usage. It's a flat, flat land without forest. Uh, even though there is, I will say it's always like those are palm oil tree. And those owners, they are no longer want to continue their plantation business and then they just switch everything into solar power. So EIA and also the Department of Environment, they are capturing this quite strictly, I would say, because we do have some experience that they will even measure the residential house, the distance between the residential houses and also the solar farm. If you are within a certain distance, they are not going to allow you to build solar power there because they are afraid of uh, those, uh, those radiation kind of stuff. Even though this is not true, because solar panel, the radiation, I would say, is much lower in contact with our mobile phone, but they will have all this kind of uh, concern. So I would say they are, they, are the, they are the gatekeeper. So far, Malaysia, they are keeping this gate uh, quite strictly. And the other one is the local authority. You need to ensure your land, right, uh, about the usage, the purpose. So those are also another angle which they will assess on how you are utilizing this land for what purpose, all right? So this is all the different, or let's say in the 50 years later, if this is a residential zone, usually they might not approve you to use this land to as a solar, uh, as a solar farm. So this is all the different consideration that I will say, the different department in the country they will assess and they will go through this one by one. So I will say it's still pretty, uh, fine in terms of controlling because our minister, she is also the minister, the minister for the environmental. So we all know, right, she walk around and find all these uh, illegal plastic, uh, the manufacturing plants, right? Yes. And also people who burn the rubbish, all this stuff, and she's really concerned about this. So as all, all of this area have already become one of uh, the criteria that we all have to fulfill if we want to build a solar farm. That's why not all the land in the country we can do solar farm. Yeah. How about alternating right here? Like what China does? Uh, maybe. Oh, on the yeah, yeah, yeah. On the water, reservoir water. This happened. Yeah, this this is possible in the, in the country. That's why they encourage a lot of people to do it on the roof and also uh, on the those waste land or on the land field. So this is the first question. And then the second question is more about the solar technology. Uh, I would say there's a lot of fancy solar technology around. So it depends on the purpose. So if let's say they own their purpose is they want to have fancy cool stuff, they can go for 
those kind of so fancy solar uh, as a building integrated source. Let's close their eyes, treat this as a marketing fee. Because the price it could be five times more expensive if compared with traditional uh, the solar panels. Technology, uh, the technology is there, but I would say because of the need and also the demand, uh, because more people they are quite practical, unless they really won't go for the architecture design, they will go for that. And so that's a very niche market. Because at this moment, the price is pretty costly. And you still can see this in Malaysia, but I would say it's not that common. Uh, it's not a common yet, unless those are those are concept house, which they want to show the futuristic of a building and low energy, they go for that. So that's mainly on the economy side. On the technical side, right, usually the efficiency will be much, much, much lower. Because for those the solar systems which you can integrate together with your building wall, it's always transparent solar. So in order to make the solar system able to be transparent from a physical point of view, is what we need to do, we need to cut it. So like just a thin film, they need to use a laser to cut it. So when you cut it, which means the efficiency will become lesser. When efficiency becomes lesser, which means you need to use more uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, area for the solar system. So the cost will increase, technology, in terms of efficiency, will become pretty low. So it's all back to the purpose for what kind of technology you want to use, or what kind of uh, function you want to use, I mean, so for what purpose. That's why we always will have a lot of discussion with architect. Any architect here? It seems like everyone here are not from bankers or architect. <laughs> architect they always come with full of imaginations. And they will design a lot of fancy stuff, but in reality we can't fulfill their imagination. This is something that we always face. So in the end it always depends on who is going to tolerate. Yeah. And then end up the Paymaster, who is the building owner, will come and make a call, which is the one which I will go. And most of them usually they go for an economy sign. Yeah. Or maybe they will receive some portion just for showcase. This do, this uh, does happen in Malaysia as well. I have questions for KL. You know our living architect our lifestyle is living in the apartments more than the houses, as the land is scarce here. So uh, how can solar, how can your company help us help this building uh, to use, to tap on this solar technology to reduce uh, cost of utilities? Thanks a lot. Two way, there's two way to work on that. Uh, which is not so common, I would say. So these two ways are also very difficult to happen. It's not that practical to be frank. But if you would never want to find a solution, there's always a solution. The first solution is install solar panel on the condominium roof. But this energy will go to where? Because unless you're a penthouse, uh, usually the whole condominium for solar is, I mean for the building electricity is always come from the different build or different unit. So kept where is always a challenge. Yeah, it's very it's very it's very challenging and the whole building roof, right, it's all belongs to who? It's all not belongs to us. The ownership is all belongs to the whole building owners. So this is always very tricky unless the they building, consent. the community, they would like to install this and then they get everyone to do fundraising. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So, so they all, this could be a great building. The developer already designed this upfront. So it doesn't help any particular building to save the energy. But the whole building is a green building. Yeah, so this is what happened. And then the second part is, this happened in US, and also for those energy markets which they are really open their energy trading markets. So if let's say you want to use solar energy, but doesn't mean you need the roof, you can get the energy from someone who has solar panel on their roof. That's what we mentioned just now, as a kind of energy trading. And if let's say their energy cost is cheaper, then you can purchase from there. But this is not really happening in Malaysia, this moment. And I would say this is also not that mature yet for this mechanism and system. Yeah. But in future, in future, I think a lot of possibilities. Because when you work with the government, the government will have the idea. Yeah, because they are going for this now. Yeah, yeah, but I would say right now the government, they all come back to solve all the fundamental stuff. All the fundamental yes. stuff, which is how can we make all the roof owner able to enjoy a solar panel first? Or how can I get a bank to be 
really get exciting when they want to invest in or finance solar system. So this is a lot of all these fundamental stuff they which they need to play over before they go to before they go to that extent. Uh, we have one question for me. Yeah. Okay, uh, I would like to say that, yeah, we know that uh, solar energy or renewable energy is one, uh, it, it's, a new, it, it's our future, and actually it's now. But uh, I'm more concerned on how the manufacturer, solar energy manufacturer, how to tackle the waste, which is a waste, because you install thousand acres of solar panel on the roof or on the ground. So once all these panels, plastic, right? So once it's uh, uh, you cannot use already. How are you going to make it? Can it be recycled, or is there other way to treat all these waste? And is it toxic? Yeah. So can you enlighten us on that? And uh, if talking about 20% energy, actually, I would like to uh, pose this another question, which is, when do you think Malaysia can go for more than 50% of energy shift? But I think that you already answered the challenge that we are facing. But uh, I think if 20% is still considered not major, if after 50% then only then the paradigm shift point will be more energy. Thank you so much. Very good questions. Uh, yeah, so the question asked by Ms. Winnie is that the first one is um, because we install a lot of solar panels, so at the end of the life of the solar panel, so how do we treat uh, all these old and non-functionable solar panels because it will eventually end up as maybe e-waste. Okay, so the second question is, uh, just now Mr. Kong has already presented about uh, Malaysia can reach uh, 20% by uh, 2025 or 2030, and then what about reaching 50%? Because 20% uh, actually is still very minority in the total energy generation. Yeah, so that's the question. So the first question is the top three question which a lot of people always ask. I think that's good because we all care about environment. If you're building something here but you're just destroying something there, what's the meaning, right? So for all of the solar panel manufacturers, they have their own KPI about the carbon footprint. So they need to uh, match a certain a criteria about for their carbon footprint. So that's the first thing. To ensure whatever they generated to manufacturing of solar panels, is able to consume it, I mean, it's able to, uh, uh, I would say, offset it by utilizing this solar panel for the solar farm or the roof building. Second part is about the, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, wastage. So for all the factory who do this uh, manufacturing, they have all this uh, kind of a waste control system, which is, no matter they are doing solar panel or they are doing battery power bank, or any chemical type of stuff or any manufacturing stuff which they have to go through all of this, the safety and also uh, sorry, the wastage uh, management system. Which this same, the same thing it will apply for solar panels as well. So they need to ensure all this kind of, uh, all the chemical I would say there are some toxic uh, element there. So they have to ensure all of these things all well managed and well taken care. That's why it is pretty safe for us to visit solar panel factory. It's pretty safe. And when we come out, we don't need to be just uh, out of some place or need to drink some milk or those kind of things. It's pretty safe. Yeah. And the risk management is something which is under control, I would say, right now, because it's solar panel beneficial are really more than 50 over years. So we need well control. We can maybe line us uh, how they treat on those those, those those station. And the other part is about the implementation part. So after the entire life cycle, right? Uh, there are a couple of solar companies they are offering recycle system. So for the building owners or let's say for the outside owner where they are go not going to continue this solar system, they are able to go to recycle it. And then the material for solar panel, they have no plastic. Um, okay, the cable they are consisting of a PVC, but for the solar panel itself is aluminum frame, and also uh, for the glass, solar cell is from silicon. Yeah, the only plastic la layer is uh, under the solar cell, there's a kind of a piece of a white sheet, they call this the EVA. So those are something that probably need to have some match, uh, uh, recycle or a special arrangement from there. So 
basically this is how the solar panels uh, 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 contain those materials and uh, a lot of all of these companies actually they have uh, offering like a recycle program for example like First Solar uh, is a US company they are the one who are pretty aggressive to offering the recycle program to recycle solar panel when they are not going to use it or if let's say your solar panel already has some broken or any issue they will come in and then they will have to recycle they will recycle them but it depends on the owner how they go to treat it. So this kind of measurement is something very important. Yeah. But not yet happened because right now in Malaysia this was six seven years, solar panel lifetime is about twenty five years. I see solar panel up to thirty or forty years before which running in Japan, they are still working. So yeah, the time doesn't come yet, but there are some system awareness there. So this answer your first question. The second question is about fifty percent. Um I would say renewable energy uh, consists of different types of the uh, energy. So, uh, alter, uh, so like solar energy and the wind energy is, I would say, it's not that fixed. That's why it will never become the major energy source, solar and wind. You need a lot of other technology to support it as a base energy, to support on the base side. So, you, we will see more type of uh, renewable energy happen, or more type of clean energy happen in the future instead of just solar or wind including like a storage system the storage system will become more affordable and the efficiency and this kind of the, the life cycle for you to use it it will become, it will become longer so we need all these kind of different alternative energy to support the energy source and then definitely on the traditional energy side I think fossil fuel uh, so this uh, is a coal fire power plant uh, really uh, reduce a lot a lot of banks like Goldman Sachs and Daniel Spence they already stopped doing financing on the coal fire power plant. A lot of people right now they are more focused on uh, this gas and gas they are able to make it clean. So those could be another type of alternative, alternative energy for the different type of energy source in the country. And the other one is in order to achieve 50 percent for the clean energy, mixed clean energy, right? Uh, first of all, is a different type of energy source important. The other one is about the grid. This is what I mentioned before, the grid needs to be smarter in order to capture and also able to support for all this kind of different demand and supply. It's all just about the demand side and the supply side kind of the management. Because right now, all the energy flow and the management is pretty traditional. It's, a lot of it is still uh, uh, pretty much depends on the from high voltage to low voltage, some of the mechanical devices to switch on and off. Definitely there are some electronics there already. But uh, it's not able to learn your energy usage pattern. It's not able to predict where, which area, and which building, or which time will have more energy is demanding. And it's, it's even more difficult to predict the weather. When the huge solar farm is going to down, and then I need to increase the energy from there. So all of this technology it will come from machine learning or the IoT uh, kind of uh, collaboration. And I would say this is not really happened right now today. That's why if we have to go through all this technical challenge in order to have a bigger portion for the mixture of renewable energy and the coal uh, energy uh, resources in the country. This will take some time, which I, I don't have an idea by when this will happen. But if we can win a small step, 10% first, then 20%, I would think this is something really, which is pretty good. Okay, uh, sorry because of the time being, so we have to uh, end our session here for the Q&A, but uh, everyone can mingle around later to ask additional questions or to discuss more in detail. Uh, but before that, we would like to have a photo session, so can everybody at the back stand up?